The game rules. There are five categories with five questions per category worth 100 to 500 points. All the questions in one category will be asked, and then the next, and then so on. No points will be deducted for wrong answers, so feel free to take a guess. There will be 15 seconds to respond before the next question. The categories are 1. 1984 2. Posed in Playboy 3. WWE Films 4. Million Dollar Man 5. Partners of Kane 1. 1984 he made his televised WWF debut on August 29, 1984 in a tag team match where he teamed with the Dynamite Kid. This wrestler, the second WWE Universal Champion, was born May 7, 1984. Ric Flair defeated Dusty Rhodes by knockout at Starcade 1984 with this boxing legend as special guest referee. At WWF's Brawl to End It All, this man defeated Charlie Fulton to retain the WWF Martial Arts Championship. Yes, that did exist. He also went on to win the Battle Royal later in the show. In professional wrestling, this term refers to Saturday, July 14, 1984, the day when Vince McMahon's World Wrestling Federation took over the time slot on Superstation WTBS that had been home to Georgia Championship Wrestling and its flagship weekly program, World Championship Wrestling, for 12 years. Two, posed in Playboy. The future Mrs. Brock Lesnar posed for Playboy three times, the first in April of 1999. This issue was one of the company's highest selling ever. Former wife of wrestler Billy Kidman, she posed twice for Playboy, first solo in March 2003 and then with another wrestler in March 2004.
Called the ninth wonder of the world, this bodyguard for DX posed twice for Playboy before a short-lived adult film career later in her life. She placed fifth in the 2004 Raw Diva Search, but was still hired any year after posing for Playboy became a WWE Diva of the Year for 2009. Hired by WWE in 2004, she posed for the April 2006 issue of Playboy. At Vengeance in 2007, she defeated Melina to become the first former Diva Search contestant to win a WWE title. Three WWE films. WWF had produced this 1989 film starring Hulk Hogan. The first three WWE films, The Scorpion King, The Rundown, and Walking Tall, all starred this wrestler. In 2006, WWE Films made this horror film starring their big red monster Kane. A straight-to-video sequel, 12 Rounds 2 Reloaded, starred this man. Dylan Hornswoggle Postal starred in this horror film franchise reboot, subtitled Origins. Four Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase was trained by these two brothers in 1972, both former NWA heavyweight champions. In 1979, Ted DiBiase had a short run with WWF and was this wrestler's first opponent in Madison Square Garden. DiBiase signed with WWF in 1987 despite not knowing his gimmick until after he agreed, though he was promised it would receive a serious push. This WWF official informed DiBiase that if owner Vince McMahon were to go out to wrestle, it would be this gimmick that he would give himself.
Ted DiBiase had two successful runs in Japan tag teaming with this man. They held the PWF Tag Team Championships for two years. The Million Dollar Man tried to have this wrestler win him the WWF Heavyweight title, but WWF refused to acknowledge DiBiase as the champion since titles could not be handed to someone else and declared the title vacant. Five, partners of Kane. Defeating the New Age Outlaws, Kane won his first tag team championship with him on Monday Night Raw, July 13th, 1998. Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart lost the tag team titles to Kane and this man on Monday Night Raw, January 25th, 1999. On the April 17th episode of SmackDown, Edge and Christian lost the tag team titles to Kane and The Undertaker, collectively called this. In September 2003, Kane was the Intercontinental Champion but won tag team titles on Raw when he teamed with this superhero wrestler. Team Hell No, which was Kane and Daniel Bryan, both argued their individual ownership of the championship with this catchphrase. In the meantime and in between time, that's it for this episode. Thanks for playing. In the meantime and in between time, that's it for this episode. Thanks for playing. <laughs>